Okay, folks, uh, starting off with the next slide here. Now that we know how to find the force between two charges, we're going to start to look at some what we call multi charge distributions. All right, so uh, this is the case where we're going to try to find the net force that acts on the center negative charge. So uh, you notice we have two equal charges on the outside, but the distance between each charge and the blue charge is different. All right, so we're going to try to, we're going to do our best to. Uh, to draw a free body diagram accordingly. And that's what we're doing here, really drawing free body diagrams. So in that sense, it's not too much different from what we've been doing so far. All right, so I'll say that uh, the red charge here attracts the blue charge. And I'm gonna call this F2 as it's the force exerted by charge two. All right, um, what you should hopefully be able to see, again, since force, electrostatic force depends on magnitude of charges and on their separation, since Q1 over here, the green charge, is farther away from the blue charge, the force it exerts is going to be smaller. Let's call that F1 as it's the force that charge 1 exerts. All right, if we want to find net force, uh, I'll do this. Net force on the blue charge, well, just like we've done before, to find a positive direction. And, uh, you know, since these are opposite, these forces are pointing in opposite directions, we have to subtract them to find the net. All right. And, of course, to find each one of them, we're doing K, Q, Q over R squared. Of course, in this case, there's no R, so we're not going to actually solve the problem. But, um, you know, that's how you would quantify how big each one of those forces, F2 and F1, are. Okay. Uh, in a case like this, notice I've made the distances the same but I've changed the magnitudes of the forces that are pulling or pushing on the blue charge. So uh, if we do red charge again first, it's going to pull with a force, let's say, like this. We'll call that F2. Again, the force that charge 2 exerts. That notation doesn't matter a whole bunch. Just come up with a way that works for you. Um, and here we can actually quantify this, right? These distances are the exact same. It doesn't even matter what the blue charge is. But since the green charge is half the magnitude of the red charge, it means the force it exerts is half as strong. And that's you know really only because um, the distances, the separations between the charges are exactly the same. All right, so again here, uh, now I screwed this up, didn't I? I did, yeah. Uh, what I screwed up, you might notice, green charge is still negative, so sure, it attracts the blue charge. But notice, charge on the right is positive, right? So it's going to repel this blue charge. So I really should have it like that. That's better. And notice F2 twice F1, okay? So that means still if we want net force, here we do F1 plus F2. Same thing as negative F1 minus F2. If you want to make them both negative, that's fine. Here, I just called left the positive direction. All right. Now, the question is, uh, where does it, where is it that we can put the blue charge such that there's zero total force on it? It's a positive charge, and we have two different magnitude charges that will pull on it. Um, so, I would, if I were you, I'd pause for a minute and see what you can come up with. All right. Well. Okay, so uh, here we are. We're looking for a place where the net force is zero. Well, it's going to end up being somewhere over here. If you chose over here, you were right. Um, and the reason is, you know, typically force exerted by this green charge would be smaller because it's a smaller charge. But we're closer to it, so that would make it, you know, bigger. And again, conversely, uh, this red charge would typically exert a stronger force since it's a bigger charge, but we're farther away from it, so we might get a case where those two forces Hi. balance. Hi. This is Thank for you. you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry for that interruption. Um, yeah, so I hope this works out for you. Smaller charge doesn't pull as hard unless you put a charge closer to it. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, now, this is another little, little challenger, and I recommend that you pause for a minute and try to figure out uh, where and how this might be possible. Where can we put a positive charge such that there would be zero net force on it? So pause for a minute, see what you can come up with. 
what I realized is I have to give you charges here. So let's call this uh, let's call this five coulombs, and let's call this uh, two coulombs. This would really be negative five. All right. So maybe again, pause. See if you can come up with. So here's what I came up with. If there's a charge somewhere over here, a positive charge somewhere over here, it's going to be repelled by this uh, red charge. It's going to be attracted by the green charge. But again, since we're closer to a weaker charge, right, the force that the, this, this red force here is going to be, you know, generally, it would be weaker because it's a small, coming from a smaller charge. But we're closer to that charge, so it has whatever magnitude it has. The green force, well, a bigger charge, this 5 Coulomb charge, would typically exert more force, but since we're farther away from it, these these this force you know could be the same size as the red one. All right, there's a mathematical solution to where that is, depending on uh, what the charge of this. Well, I guess it doesn't depend on what the blue charge is, but it does depend on how far apart the five and the two are. Okay. Uh, Nonlinear stuff, you know, we won't we won't do a well. We'll actually we'll do a solution in a few minutes, but um, the deal here is. You know, Q1 is going to push the green, sorry, the blue charge away. Let's call this F1. Q2 is going to pull the blue charge towards it. We'll call that F2. The net force is going to be the vector sum of those two. All right, so we're actually adding these tip to tail, just like we always do. We always add tip to tail. We don't always necessarily talk about it that way. But if we call this F net, well, we'd say that F net is the square root, whoops, the square root of F1 squared plus F2 squared. Right? And again, we'd calculate the strengths of F1 and F2 using Coulomb's law. Uh, we'll go through a couple of examples. Um, we actually want to find the strength of the force on the center charge. I'm going to label these. I'm going to call this charge 1. I'm going to call this charge 2. I'll call this charge 3. All right, so first thing I always do is start with an identification of the directions of forces. All right, I'm even going to do a little color coding. We'll make this one a red one. I'll make this one a blue one. No, it already is blue. Super. Uh, let's see. So charges 1 and 2 are both positive. So there's a force that looks like this, F1, acting on charge 2. Uh, charge 3 is negative, so there's an attractive force between these. I'll call that F3. Uh, so if we want our net force, it's going to be F1 plus F3. Okay, so uh, that's going to be K. Now, F1 is the, the force that 1 exerts on 2. And we use the distance from 1 to 2. Don't forget to square it. Uh, F3 will go K. And it's the force that uh, 3 exerts on 2. And we use the separation of 2 and 3. Don't forget to square it. Lots of ways to go here with algebra. If you want to factor out that K, you could actually factor out K and Q2, right? K and Q2. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing that. I don't want to get it too confusing. Um, but I will over here. I typically wouldn't do this, but uh, I'm going to do this. So F1 is K, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared, times Q1. Uh, so Q1 is 6. Now that mu sign means micro, or 10 to the negative 6 million. Uh, you'll see that a bunch and 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, all divided by 3 centimeters. I'm going to turn into uh, 0.03 meters. Don't forget to square. And for this, I get 90, an even 90 newtons. Uh, for F2, uh, let's see, so that's going to be K. 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared times, let's see, Q3 is negative 2. Well, you know what? Here's a good lesson, a, good, a real good lesson, actually. Um, and I'm going to write this. 
Uh, where should I write it? I'll write it here. Never use sign of charge in calculation. Right, if we use the sign of the charge, it comes out with something like that the force is negative, and typically we want to say negative means to the left or something, and, and we want to really avoid that. That's why it's really important to first get one of these diagrams going and write yourself a good net force statement. Forget about signs of charges and anything mathematical. Just let it dictate directions of forces when you draw your, uh, draw your free body diagram. So I'm just going to write that as 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs times 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, all divided by 0 0.02 meters. Now, let's see. Hard to tell in this case which force would be bigger. I mean, we know because we know what the answer is, but, you know, Q1 is farther away than, than Q3 is, but Q1 is a bigger charge than Q3 is, so in this case, kind of hard to tell which one's bigger, um, but when we uh, when we calculate, yeah, we get 67 and a half, well, I'll just, I'll just call it 67 newtons. All right, so then, like we said, we just add those up, and there's our answer of 157 newtons for the net force. Oh, and I should say that since our answer is positive, that means to the right. It won't always be that clear cut. All right, so make sure you're uh, aware of your own sign convention and what that means about the direction of, uh, of a resultant force, okay? Uh, in this case, um, I'll, I'll say on purpose, I didn't put any numbers in here, um, but there's a nice, little, uh, a nice little couple of things to point out here. One of them, let's say that this value x, like a distance from the y-axis, and this value x are the same distance, um, just, just so we're sure there. One thing we can do is, you know, the, the red charge here is going to attract this uh, blue one. The green charge over here is going to attract this blue one. And notice we have a, we have a certain symmetry to this, to this problem. Okay, what we would really do if we wanted to solve this is we would, you know, break these both into X and Y components, right, and then add the Y components of them both and add the X components of them both and then probably Pythagorate all that stuff. But in this case, the symmetry is nice, all right? If we define an angle here, uh, let's call this angle theta. And, well, this is the same angle theta. So we'll be, we'll be sure that we say those are equal. Now, you might notice that, you know, the, that red force, for example, has components that look like this, right? The green force has components that look like this. And hopefully you can notice that these two, well, I should say this, those are equal in magnitude, right? And these are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay, so what that means is these X components, the left and right parts, cancel each other out. And what we're left with, if we call this, um, well, let's call this F, uh, well, we'll just call it F, all right? And this is, let's call it F uh, Y. Okay. If we define our angle theta there, well, that says that Fy is F cosine theta, all right? Well, hopefully we can notice that if we want to find our net force, what we end up with is this Fy and this Fy, here's our other Fy, added tip to tail. And again, the X components cancel each other out. So in, in the simplest way we can, we can say that the net force here is really two of those Fy's, or two F cosine theta. Okay, now what's in, real important to point out is that works because this charge and this charge have the same exact magnitude, all right, and that they're the same exact distance away from the, um, from the x axis, sorry, from the y axis. Okay, so we just turn this into uh, that the net force is. 2k, now dig this, uh, force would be kqq, but it's q times 2q, right? Uh, because we're using charge and charge. Now what I didn't do is, there's a couple ways to do this, but if we just call this r, just for simplicity's sake here, 
Um, we'll just say that's uh, over r squared. All right, so that turns into, let's see, put those twos together, we get four. There's the k. Put those q's together, we get q squared. There's r squared. Now, I did forget to make sure to include, I'm going to do it right now. I made, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't include this cosine theta here, so I'll make sure I do that. And then I'll do one more step down at the bottom to 4k q squared over r squared cosine theta. All right, so using symmetry there, um, we can get a, a, a much simpler answer um, than, we, than we usually would. Okay? I ran a little long. I hope this whole thing loaded. See you guys.